So let's talk about some of the, the new dyes or new shapes. One of the things I also love when it comes to designing is the fact that I still have a love for steel rule dyes. I think steel rule dyes are great. Uh, remember thick dyes cut thick things. So when I'm designing and I'm choosing what I want to design, I really take that into account as well. What would I use that shape for? Am I going to use it mostly for paper? If I am, it'll probably be a thin dye because not only can I do more detail, but it's also uh, a better price point. You know, you can get a lot of pieces on a thin dye at, for 20 bucks, whereas when you're dealing with steel, I only have so much rule that I'm allowed to use to keep under that price point. If I use more blade, it's going to be a more expensive dye. You know, that's why when you look at some of the dwellings and all of that, uh, even the new typo alphabet, you're talking like an $80 alphabet because there is a ton of blade to cut that out, but I want to cut out a chipboard alphabet, so I'm going to do that. So. When we work with some of these, I'm going to start just by, I'll just cut this out of chipboard. I don't know if she has any, no, she doesn't have any, oh wait, uh, no she doesn't, so that's okay. I'll just take a piece of chipboard. Here I'm going to work with two cutting pads, make my sandwich like normal. I'm going to go ahead and put this in. Now, when we're cutting through this, I'm just going to show you the new Gadget Gears 2. There's a huge steampunk influence, obviously, in this release. Hey. <laughs> She abused it before you got here. No. I wonder why that didn't even cut. Let us try. I'm going to shin this thing. Let's see what happened. Did she break my machine? <laughs> she worked it. She did. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so what I did good on video if something doesn't cut a single sheet of paper you think that cannot do anything it does everything and you just put it right under your die okay you still want it in your sandwich don't put it under your cutting pad because you don't want it to get stuck in the rollers but you think well that can't make a huge difference absolutely it can so I use this trick often when I'm doing even a detailed die maybe you're cutting a doily or something and you've used it all the time but for whatever reason like one little spot isn't cutting right just put that piece of cardstock under there and it's done it's good. So um, what I wanted to point out on these new gears, what I like about this is the detail, the ability that we have to do this. Gadget gears was one of the first dies that I did and they were very simple. Uh, this one, a lot of bends, they were like, you don't understand how much money a bend is in a steel rule. But it's nice to know that the technology has also evolved and allows us to do a lot more detail even in a steel rule die. Now this particular die cuts three different gears and these gears are designed to scale with the original gadget gear so this is larger than the largest one the medium is smaller than the medium one so you can use this with the original one to layer and kind of interlock them it's really cool so it's all about taking those new dies and working with the original dies it's never about oh you don't have that it's if you have it you've got now another die to layer and get additional depth out of it one of my favorites is also uh, the new dapper this guy is really really cool because we can do some very interesting things with him. I'm just gonna go into, let's do some metallic card. Maybe we'll do something thick. Let's do cork. All right, I'm just gonna take a sheet of cork. Now, if I was gonna put this on a card or anything like that, I could already adhere it to chipboard if I wanna do that, but I'm just showing you just for a quick demo purpose, so I have nothing in mind. These are the textured surfaces from Ideology. They're adhesive back textures. We do them in cork and corrugate and burlap and now we do the textile surfaces of adhesive back fabric, uh, linen, chambray. So all of these just peel and stick on a surface. If I was going to make a project, usually I would already peel and stick it to my surface before I cut it out. But for demo purposes, I'm not gonna bother. So let's go in to cutting pads. Let's see how this is gonna do. You can also hear that the motor's really quiet. It's different than that original one. Yeah, it's a whole different torque. So here's what's interesting about this particular shape. Um, as cool as these pieces are, because it's gonna cut out our mustache and our little vest and our top hat pieces, it really creates a very cool dapper shape, but it also makes an amazing silhouette. So let's take out his bow tie. There's his bow tie pieces and also little collar pieces. So when I'm working with this guy, he creates a really great negative. That's what we've used here even on linen, but he also creates a great positive. You can use it as a stencil, which Rochelle was showing, but you can also use this as a template to layer on a card. So if I wanted to use 
the heavier pieces, the thick pieces. I would die cut it out of chipboard, whatever the case is, lay this down on my card, and use that as that template to kind of glue everything back down onto my card. But he's cool. He's a cool negative. So speaking of that, let's go on to this die, this steel die. This one is mosaic. What I like about this, I'll jump into something a little thicker. If she has any left. She doesn't like the fact that when I'm here, I use up all her good stuff. She's like, you used all my stuff. I did, I did. All right. Mm, I'll just try this. This isn't the good stuff. I was gonna use mirrored. What I'm gonna do here is this mosaic die, what I like about this tile die is that we can create some art tiles. I've seen a lot of things when it comes to um, pocket books and scrapbooks and things like that creating this mosaic this is a really great template to cut out of a piece of chipboard to make for a book cover you can incorporate photos and words so this leaves a great frame behind but these tiles they do have some significance to them besides the fact that they're really great different shapes that have rounded corners all of these tiles are sized to fit my ideology fragments so if you are into mixed media or journaling or stamping you can create your collage and art on chipboard or canvas or whatever, run this through, create these art tiles, and then glue them under the acrylic fragments and it's already ready to go. So that's really cool for me. For me, I just like to stamp and collage and create and just cut out all my art tiles, glue them on, I'm ready to go. So that was another reason. As, as cool as the negative is, just to be able to cut all these art tiles, awesome. It's a really cool way to go. Then of course, we did like the new uh, ornate frame rectangle. It's just a rectangular version of the oval that's been so popular. We've done some new frameworks, but let's get on to some. Be sure to like our video and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Scrap Time Videos, to be the first to see the latest videos from CHA 2016.